our main simulation environment is going to be Climate Studio and Grasshopper in Rhino. So let's just go over that environment before we do any um, simulations. You should have already downloaded Climate Studio. I uh, gave you a link in Canvas. Um, and so you should be able, you should see this when you open, or something like this when you open a, a file. Um, there are a couple ways to access Climate Studio um, workflows. You can just come to the Climate Studio tab and access them here. So let me just go ahead and readjust this. Um, so if, as I click these, you'll see that the, in this workflow tab, um, the workflows are changing. Um, the workflow itself, of course, can be adjusted however you want. I um, th there are two tabs you're gonna, that you're going to want to have access to easily. One is the workflows, the other is the results. Um, I like to dock them to the side uh, next to my layers. And uh, then you, you have to get adept at, you know, moving through the, uh, adjusting the, this window because um, you need different sizes for different things. And of course, you're going to want to see your, your, your layers all the time because you're constantly uh, turning those on and off. So here's my main Climate Studio um, workflow tab. Let me start with, uh, well, actually, don't. Uh, this, the little earth, is the, the main climate um, summary page and where you download or you access climate files. Remember, that's what we're doing here. We're doing a, uh, a timed simulation or a, a simulation over time in a specific location. So we always need to have a climate. Uh, to choose climate, we select this folder here. There are a bunch of um, climate files that come uh, pre-packed with Climate Studio, so you can probably, you can often find what you need here, just searching. Um, there's a, so a number of New York, um, I'm often using LaGuardia, for example, I could click on this, open it, say OK, and it would, it would well, let's just do it. Say OK, and now I have LaGuardia here. Um, I can also uh, access other files that I've downloaded here, and so this is a bunch of other files. By the way, if you do this, I would put these somewhere else than in, this is the, um, the default location that uh, Climate Studio stores climate files, but I would put them somewhere where you know where they are, where you can find them. Otherwise, this is deep in your uh, explorer tree or your, your file tree. So how would we, if, if we did, if we want to get another file, how would we um, do that? One place, there's various places you can get weather files. First of all, what are they? Um, they're called um, TMY files, you'll see. Um, when you, like for example, if we go back to Climate Studio and I look around for, see these are all TMY files. And they actually have a, uh, a year here, which probably means these are TMY3 files. What do I mean by that? Um, so TMY means typical meteor, meteor, <laughs> meteorological meteor a logical here that's hard to say for me um, and uh, there's TMY TMY2 and TMY3 and they're just different um, TMY3 has a slightly different format but it'll look the same in you know if, if it's used in something like climate studio but the main difference is that they're different uh, sets of years so just commonly go for the highest TMY number you can that, that's available Once we have a climate file, uh, if we're if we're in our uh, climate data uh, summary page, uh, there's a couple things I want to point out. First, this is a constant um, refrain in this class. Remember what units you're in. This is one place that you can switch the units that you're in for Climate Studio between IP and SI. If you change it here, it changes it everywhere. Everywhere that it is changeable. Um, so let's just look at, you know, this is, and we're not going to talk about um, climate right now. That's a few weeks down the road. Um, though, of course, so we're going to start with daylighting. Climate has to be chosen because daylighting, of course, is specific to the location. Um, but we're not going to talk about um, these climate 
um, variables until later, and, and we've covered this in other classes. But by the way, um, I've said this before, but so Climate Studio is a, a metric and SI system based program. So anytime you, that you switch to IP, this is where they're making um, conversions. And so sometimes I've noticed that, they're, that these are wrong or just not done. So for example, if we're looking here at uh, cooling degree days, um, we set we can set the design temperature 10 degrees Celsius. And in this case, we're saying there's 2201 cooling degree days. If I switch to IP, that number doesn't change. That means they didn't do this conversion. So we can do that ourselves. We can look it up elsewhere. But just this is a good thing. You know, we're architects. We're not not engineers. Um, but we do have to be thinking using our common sense to make sure that what we're the numbers we're punching um, you know, or, you know, our, our outputs make some kind of common sense. Uh, and uh, things like that. So, you know, if we, I mean, things like this are a good example. If it's the same number for SI and IP, that's a red flag. Uh, okay. We can also, if I now turn on a, let's just turn on our little architectural model from, uh, that we built last week. Um, I have my compass. I can turn that on here in the, in this same, um, tab and it will now stay on. It, it fades out at different times. Um, but if you, if you just, uh, adjust your window or click on it, turn it on and off or whatever, it'll come back on. Um, and we can, for example, if we, if our building is not, if we want to build it on the X, Y, axis, by the way, I just, um, I paused because I didn't, I didn't see my display window. If you don't, I'm sure you know this from Rhino, but, um, you can turn on different, um, panels here and adjust, rearrange them however you want to in your, 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 your viewport. But, um, what I was saying is if I wanted to, um, it's easier to draw things on an axis sometimes, but then if my actual site is um, offset from this, I can change my compass position um, just with this this slider here. So I can model on uh, XYZ axis, but then change the orientation of my site through with um, by adjusting the compass in this in this uh, tab. But now I, I didn't finish talking about where we would um, get more climate data. So um, one site is uh, the Energy Plus website. It's a good moment to mention, if I haven't already, Energy Plus is a U.S. government energy modeling software platform that um, is pretty much used by, I guess, all of the uh, modeling programs like Climate Studio that I know of. They use this as the, the back end to their their GUIs, their graphic user, graphic user interfaces. Um, so if you really got deep into energy modeling, for example, you would uh, actually get into Energy Plus itself rather than these uh, front end uh, applications. Anyway, so we're on the Energy Plus website. Uh, we can find weather data here. There's a map that we can just search within. So I can come into, um, you know, uh, New York City select this and I could download. We're, we're looking for the EPW file. Which is a file format specifically uh, formatted for uh, building simulations. So that's why we're downloading that one. Um, we could also search here, just, you know, uh, New York. Let's see if it comes up for that various New York files. And again, here we see TMY, TMY2, and TMY3. So if I were looking at LaGuardia or, or Central Park, I would pick the TMY3 file. I have, if I've mentioned this before, I have found um, climate data files that seem to be corrupt. For example, I found one one time for uh, Las Vegas that just clearly wasn't right. So again, using your common sense, if it's if you're in a climate that's supposed to be a desert and it doesn't look like a desert when you start um, looking at simulations using it or you look at the, the summary um, data, then check it out. Use your common sense. Okay, so um, that's the, the basic idea being that we, we need to have climate data. That's how you get it. That's how we orient our, our model toward uh, the compass facing that we want. Now let's just look really quickly at the the workflows and how they work here like i said before we can click through them uh in this um i don't ever use this uh, i i 
use a lot of other tabs. So um, I don't use the, the, the Climate Studio workflows there. I use the drop down here. Uh, and we're going to go through all of these uh, this semester, uh, in addition to, to some other things. Uh, and remember, by the way, there's nothing magical about these. We're, we're using this platform because it's straightforward for people who know Rhino. Uh, these simulations make sense for any building, um, but we can simulate anything that we can imagine um, as long as we can quantify it and then um, figure out some platform or make our own um, simulation workflow. Okay, anyway, so we have uh, a site analysis um, workflow set up. By the way, they all, the workflows show up here. So if I change them, um, I always have my uh, climate file and then uh, the workflows that are within the, you know, so point in time illuminance will have a bunch of tabs um, as will site analysis will have a bunch of tabs next to it. Okay, so that's the way this works. Um, and so we have the typical sun path, wind rows, um, those uh, you'll remember from environmental systems, these basic um, climate output graphs here. Um, so we have kind of the old school approach uh, to, to modeling, which is just graphic based and not quantified so much. Um, then we're going to have a number of daylighting analyses that we can do. Um, what we'll, and I'm not going to go over these in detail right now because we'll go over them um, through each um, you know, as we need them, but actually, let me go back and turn off my wind just to show you know, you, you need to get adept at moving through this, moving quickly around and understanding. By the way, though, here, here let's just show this. Um, I can turn wind on and off here. I can also change often or pretty easily the, the, the graphic layout. So if I change my inner radius here to much smaller, my outer, I can make my outer radius larger. You have a lot of control, and you often then have can print um, your outputs, right? So um, start getting to know the, the basic um, interface here because you're going to be using a lot this semester and, and it's going to be important for your studio outputs. Um, the basic workflow and the, and the real power of Climate Studio is that there aren't many uh, inputs for each of these workflows and they are shared. Many of them are shared. So, for example, we're going to have to we'll talk about what a sky is. Um, but materials, for example, once I set them, uh, if I'm back at my layers and I've got what in this dialogue, whatever's open is what I'm going to see here. Um, so now I see nothing. Uh, this is my what's open in architecture, um, which right now is just a few things. It's actually just stuff down here in the apartment. Uh, and if I want to change these materials, I just click on the layer. And if I turn the layer off, for example, let's, let's turn uh, doors off, then it disappears. Uh, and then if I click on it, I uh, am brought to this materials palette where I can choose the material I want. And my point is, because we'll go over this in more detail, but once I've chosen a material for that, uh, that layer, if I go to a different um, workflow that requires layers, it will it will uh, um, still have the same material applied to it. So I can there very quickly move through these different uh, simulation workflows. And I can move back and forth, right, between I can do a daylight availability study and then go, wait, let me let me look at the sun again uh, and see if it kind of jives with, with what the numbers are telling me um, and uh, quickly turn things on and off within this this uh, dialogue. We're also going to use Grasshopper which is a plugin for Rhino. If you haven't used it before, and if you have Rhino 7, which you're supposed to for this class, then uh, all you do is type in Grasshopper or G and uh, open, hit enter. It's just a command, and it um, you don't have to install it or anything. This is a script. We'll talk about Grasshopper when we get to it, but I'm just saying how easy it is. We'll use this script um, to estimate a photovoltaic uh, energy production on the roof of a building uh, in, a, in a later simulation. Um, and we'll do other uh, things with Grasshopper. And that's essentially where we're going to be doing most of our work this, this semester. We're going to use Excel, of course, InDesign. Make sure you know how to make a zip folder and um, that you understand the ins and outs of making multi-page PDFs. Uh, and if you can do all that, then you're set for in terms of our digital tools requirements. Um, finally, uh, 
Climate Studio has its um, help file is just a website, um, and it's it's good. Um, you know, it could be more detailed, but uh, it has it has a lot of detail here. And so make sure that you're you're referring to it often when you have questions. Always ask me or whoever's teaching this class. And um, if you have any questions. Essentially, just um, don't push buttons. Understand what you're doing. That's the point of this. Uh, you know, I'm sure that AI is going to uh, make this an automated um, process in, in the years to come. But um, we still need to understand how this works. And that's the basic idea. It's like what's going on um, when we run a, a specific analysis? What's changing? Why is it changing? What can we do to make it go in the direction we want to go? That's the idea. All right. So let's move on to simulating.